So so people that are working, it's because they have the work ethic. It's not just because they good. Bruh, everybody's almost good nowadays, but do you have a work ethic? Facts. You know what I'm saying? Do you have the work ethic to go on the road, learn all your music for the role, play everything, then come to church and learn the five new songs that they doing this week? Dang. And be on point. And don't be talking about, hey, bro, I just got off the road. You got to realize my flight just landed five minutes. I know, but you still took the job. Come on. So you still uh, got to know the material. So you can't get over there and play 10 songs and then come over here and can't play three. Because if I come to you and say, oh, bro, I took $150 out of your check because you only knew two of the four songs. Oh, it don't make no sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to have a problem. But, but that's, that's the name of the game. It's, it's, a, it's your profession. Welcome back to the Creative War Podcast. Today, we got a very special guest. We got my homie, my brother, Phil Walker on the podcast. Phil Walker is an incredible musician out of the DMV area. Um, again, shout out to the DMV. I feel like we have some incredible musicians here. Um, but yeah, he's a great musician. Um, today on the podcast, we go over all things church. Uh, we go over what it's like being on staff at a church, how much you should charge, professionalism, um, the whole rundown, the, the challenges of being a musician out on the road. This, this interview is about an hour long and we touch on so many great topics. Now, I want to say buckle up now. Now, Phil has some things that he's going to say on his podcast that some of you may disagree with. So don't get in the comments talking crazy. If you disagree, respectfully disagree. Don't start talking crazy in the comments. I know how some of y'all get when y'all get bothered, hot and bothered. Y'all get a little zesty in the comments. But um, I hope you guys learned something from this podcast. Um, again, Phil Walker, um, dope musician. Stick around and check out the podcast. We're jumping straight into it. So stick around. All right. So jumping right in special guest today, as I already introduced Phil Walker, everyone give it up for my boy, Phil Walker in the building. Today, we're going to be talking all things uh, money, um, negotiating in church and how to handle yourself as a professional, um, whether it's you're on tour or whether you're playing in church. So just, uh, you know, setting the ground for where we're going to go and I guess building a case, so to speak. What's your thoughts on musicians getting paid in church? Um, I know that's an age old conversation that is often talked about, but just building a case, because I know some people may watch this interview, listen to it, that may say, hey, in my state or in my country, we don't believe in paying musicians. So what's the other side of why musicians should get paid? Like, what's your thoughts on that? Um. Well, I, I come from the age of musicians not getting paid into musicians That's getting good. paid. So, so I, I've seen, I've seen both sides of it. So I'm old enough to know when we weren't getting paid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And honestly, the requirements really never changed because no, especially in church, they always expect the most for the least. I'm just Come saying, not, it's not no, it's not no shade to church, yeah. but I've been doing doing it my whole life. They always expect the most for the least, so yeah. you just got to know that coming in. That's one of the cons. I don't care what size the church is. Come I don't on. care how much money they have. Yeah, they're going to expect more than what they pay you for. That's just what it is. That's yeah. just the world of church. So when you're coming into this culture, you have to know the culture of church. Mm. You have to know the culture of church and how church business is ran. Not secular business, not secular tourists, not secular artists. How church business is run. Yeah. And how gospel artists run business is not the same. And sometimes when people get in that mindset, oh, when I'm out with such and such, we do it like this. Or when I was working yeah. with this corporation, we did it. Like... This ain't that, bro. This church. Yeah. Church, if you want them to get a keyboard, don't stop bringing yours. <laughs> Wait, say that again? If you want the church to get a keyboard, don't stop bringing yours. Mm, why? Because as, because as long as you bring in yours, it doesn't put a demand on them to get the keyboard mm. now. Yeah. Because you're providing a plan B. Yeah. See, when you want somebody to pick, pick something, don't give them options. When I say, hey, I only got black, it's nothing else for you to choose. So yeah. you have to pick black. But when you say I got black, red, and blue, and the blue one, now is they can say, 
Now they can say, uh, let me go with. I don't want you to go with let me go with. This is all I got. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So 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 in church, don't give them options. Mm. This sounds like get, this sounds like a secret hack to this sounds it's like a, a secret, secret hack. hack. Whenever you give people options, they have the ability to choose. <laughs> when you don't want them to choose anything, give them one option. When you give them that one option, that's all you can take, or you or you can't have me. Period. Wow. Hey, you just said a lot right there. Um, all right. Next question is um People have, have reached out to me in the past, like, you know, younger musicians just getting started out since we've kind of already established that, you know, church is going to hire you, but they're going to typically ask for more than what they're paying you for. Uh, we know that's a can be a con, so to speak. Um, if you're wondering what that means, that means like, hey, they're going to ask you to show up on Sunday. And if something if a prophet is in town on Tuesday, they may call you and say, hey, we need you here on Tuesday. You still got rehearsal on Wednesday may got something going on Thursday. You know, if you don't learn how to negotiate right and, you know, put up boundaries in place, you may get taken advantage of. We're going to touch on all of that. Topic, uh, question number two, so to speak, is how much should a musician charge? Um, And I know that is a subjective, that is a very broad question, but how do you look at worth? Um, You posted something on your Instagram not too long ago, kind of touching on this piece, Uh, but talk to that. What's your thoughts on that? Well, you have a series of caliber of musicians. Talk about um, it. You got, you got your guys that can play that nobody knows. When mm. I say when I say nobody knows, they don't have the name out there, so to speak. Like, they're a really good musician, but they don't have necessarily a reputation because mm. they don't do anything. I mean, they don't post videos. They don't yeah. go out on the road with artists. But they're good, but there's not necessarily a demand on them. Mm. So you can charge differently when you're in demand. It's not about how skilled you are. It's about how much of the demand is on your skill. Wow. And and musicians have to take that in mind because if I'm hiring you as a keyboard player and you want to tell me I can produce, I can songwrite, I can make tracks and all that stuff, that's great. I I don't need you to do that. And I'm not going to pay you for something that I don't need you for. Wow. All I need you to do is play the keyboard, and for that, I'm paying $300. So all those other qualities you have is of no use to me. Simply put, it may sound harsh, so, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's, yeah. So, so, so to pay you for all those things doesn't really make sense. Mm. So you have, to, you have to think about that, what they're charging for with the job that's being asked for. So when you have all these skills, that may not be a, a church you want to go to. You may go to a church that say, hey, hey, we, we run or run stems every week. Okay. Yep. I can put a I can put a demand on it. Hey, we want to do a record next year. And we want to be able to use our guys. So you like, oh, I'm a producer. I could put a demand on that. Yeah. You understand? We want a guy that can jump on keys and play and maybe even jump on organ when the pastor start hooping. Oh, so you need me to do more than one job. I could put a demand on that. We want a guy that so can with, do sound. Be I can put it. I have my, I have my iPad running. Okay, you want the, with all these things? There's more of a demand, so I could charge you mm. a little higher than I would as a keyboard player. Because now you want a producer, you want a programmer, you want a musician, you want an engineer, you want a studio engineer, you want an audio engineer. Yeah, these are all separate jobs that people get a check for. I know in the black church, we always made the MD the one that got to run the tracks. But those are two separate jobs. Yeah. There's people that go on the road just to program, and they just working with the computers. They ain't even in the band. That's, that's one whole job right there. Yeah. So they want you to do that and play. So now you playing in, in your dog trying to finagle stuff and mix stuff. Yeah. in the. In the that's because you're doing more than one job. That's two jobs. I feel like certain things in church is like right there in your face, but you never think about it because you it's never like, pay attention to it because it's so normal. It's the culture of church that you run the tracks and play because that's what we do. Yeah. But those, those are two separate jobs. 
Mm. There are people that they're called playback engineers that solely go out just to run playback. Yep. Now, they may not have even arranged that show. All they're doing is playing it back. <laughs> and they get paid to do it. Now, as a now as an MD in the church, you didn't arrange the show, programmed it, mm-hmm. and doing the playback and playing. Yeah. Wow, you're MD in the band. Yeah. That's four different jobs. Wow. I've never We don't see it as that. But that's four different jobs. Because cause I guess we almost think as it as like this is my job. Of co- of course, of course I have a laptop and I run my own loops. Of course I'm going to tell the band how to navigate through this service. So it's like more so I'm a, I'm the keyboard player. But in actuality, like if you look on paper, like like let's say this was an actual. Well, some churches have like actual job requirements. But if this was all listed mm-hmm. out, it would be multiple you know, job requirements and multiple duties under that one title of keyboard player, if that makes sense. Yeah. What would you, speaking into, since we're on this topic of church and money and how to charge and stuff like that, what is your advice or what is your thoughts on differentiating um, serving your church slash serving God and like getting paid? What is that um, balance? What does that look like? How do you separate the two, so to speak? It's almost like that tension between a pastor goes out to preach at multiple different churches, but typically, if you if you're a pastor in demand, you have an honor a honorarium um, where you charge churches, you know, to come preach at. So, what is that tension, and how do you think about that? It's a it's it's a hard um, it's a hard area to really give some definitive answers, yeah, but yeah. I think you have to. You have to know um, your relationship with Christ, with Christ, and you have to build your own relationship with Christ. Yeah. And knowing the difference of relationship with Christ in your profession. Yeah. Like, w- w- if if I call somebody to fix these lights in here, yep. I'm not asking them are they saved. Yeah. I'm not asking them do they know Christ. Well, I probably would ask them that. Yeah. But that's not the requirement to fix these lights. But yeah. guess what? When I say fix these lights. And also, oh yeah, up on the up on the uh, top floor, those lights are going. They are messing up as well. They're like, oh, the charge I gave you was for this <laughs> one. Yeah. So now you add on to that. But don't you love God not, though? You you love God. You need to God, fix but, the other room. But this is my pro, <laughs> this is my profession. Yeah. And musicians, we get it hard because they y'all taking y'all 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 talents to the secular world. Okay, so everybody that's in this church work for Christian. Nope. Walmart is a Christian company. Target, these are Christian companies. American mm-hmm. Airlines, are they owned by Christian? So when you go in, on a job interview, do you ask them how they say it? And if yeah. they say no, you would not take the job? Yeah. No, you wouldn't do that. Because that's not what you're there for. Yeah. You're there to do a job. Come on. So as a Good. musician, this is a part of our job. This is my profession. Yeah. Not trying to be funny. Me believing in Christ or not, that's a preference that you can put it. You can you can make that a preference for your job. Yeah. When you're if hiring. You say, I guys got yeah, I guys gotta be safe. Cool. Yep. Yep. But not trying to be funny, most churches don't. Cause here's the thing. Here, here it is, here it is. There are some musicians, they can they know church. They can play their butts off. And don't even believe in God. They they struggling. They come to church. <laughs> they high. don't even believe in God. Come to church high. Play play the church on the few. Church run oh, around. There's no, there no church. And I don't even but I don't even really believe in God. But that's but that's not their fault. Yeah. And not trying to be funny. If that's their choice, that's cool. But if you hire them like that, yeah. Yeah. Don't now try to place a demand on them to be saved mm-hmm. when that wasn't the demand you placed on them when you yeah. hired them. Yeah. I feel like you got to figure out. Now, what don't don't try to turn me are. into a Christian now. Yeah, because you ain't care about that when you really need yeah. me. <laughs> you didn't. You just wanted me to do the job, and that's what I do. So if 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 they hire you as a bass player, just know your bass player material. Don't ask me to listen to the pastor while he preach. Don't Uh-oh. ask me to take communion. Don't Uh-oh. ask me to be baptized. Uh oh. Because those things are not a part of my profession. Those are things that are part of your Christianity and your religious do- denomination. 
That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to do my profession. I'm not here to have a religious conversation with you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you make if you want to have those type of guys, you have to make that a requirement. God and must or, be saved. And or I think because I think there are certain situations that we probably both can agree that you walk into and you may look at it as like, all right, this is my job. This is my profession. You may have that mindset of I'm going to show up, you mm -hmm. know, when whatever you put in that contract for me to show up, that's when I'll be here. Anything outside of that, I'm not going to be here. Like you may go in like that. And over time, you may develop a relationship with the people there to the point where it's like, no, you know what? I care about this church. I care about the people here. I may be willing to give a little bit more because, you know, go ahead. <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been a musician for 20 years. Talk to me. And this is, I, I hope this don't be taken out of context. Just talk to me. Say it. But un <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. And this is a sad, This, is, like I said, you got to know the cons of doing church. Yeah. When you build a relationship with church, that's mm. when they can take advantage of you. Mm. As long as you keep it professional, we could deal with the black and white. But it's when I, when I gain a relationship with you that you want favors. <laughs> well, if the church, well, if the church gives you favors. And that's what a, re but that's what a relationship is. Okay. Okay. A relationship is a two way street. Gotcha. And so as, as a person that's in a friendship, I'm not just going to call you my friend because I like you. You got to like me too. And we do things for yeah, each other. Yeah, I Sometimes I call you, Hey bro, I need a ride. You give me a ride. Sometimes you say, Hey bro, my car's down. Can you get, we do stuff for each other. It's not a one way street. Mm hmm. So the church might ask me, okay, can you do, can you uh, do a rehearsal on Thursday this week? Sure. Cool. I'll do that rehearsal. I ain't go, I ain't go, oh, I need 150. I'll do it. Cool. But next week I'm going to be out because me and my wife going to be on vacation. So I'm not going to make that rehearsal, but I would still like my check to be the same amount. Cool. You and your wife yeah. go enjoy yourself. You're going to get your check. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Let it be yeah. give and take. Yes. But the problem is with churches, they want to be ministry minded when they are in the deficit. <laughs> uh huh. And they want to be business minded when you are in the deficit. Mm -hmm. So when you show up late, oh, we pay you. You need to be on time. Yeah. Because we pay you to be at 830. Yeah, but you know what? Y'all was late with my check last week. Mm -hmm. So what's the penalty for y'all? For me, an ideal world is like, I want to have a church where I can build a relationship with. It can kind of be that two-way street. That's like kind of the, yeah. the, I feel like that eliminates any weirdness of, because uh, I don't know if you can ag agree, but I feel like it's weird. It shouldn't be, but it, it's kind of weird when it's like, hey, um, I'm doing an extra service. Pay me. And you ask me to do this, pay me. Sometimes kind of be like, oh, the last yeah, person, can, they ain't asked for yeah, this. Can, Why he acting like it, that? He weird, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you know when it's when it's that rigid, it can feel weird. But I would say, you have to manage that based on the church. Yes, exactly. That's exactly. something you have to as 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 a as a contractor. That's something that you have to manage yes. to see what do I put in place for this particular place of employment. That because is so true. If if these if these people are the type that will take advantage of you, then I gotta keep it black and white with y'all. Exactly. Yep. This pastor, he's understanding. He's had good musicians before. He travels. He's on the road. He understands business and all that stuff. We can, we can, we can have yeah. dialogue. We can have a conversation, and we can work with each other. Yeah, because you know I, what I'm I, saying. So you you can't go with one size fits all for everything. exactly, exactly. And that's what I'm about to say. Every church is not the same, and so you got to manicure it based on the culture of that church and how you need to conduct business with this particular church. So yes. the way you conduct business with this church may be one way, and the way you conduct business with this church may be another way. Yes. But you have to do your due diligence on what way you need to conduct business with that particular ministry. And, and that's a part of you being questions. a professional. Ask yeah, question ask to those questions up front. Or when y'all do extra services, do y'all want us to just do it off of free will? Or is, is that a paid situation? If it's not a paid situation, then let's come up with something that benefits the both of us. Okay, you're yes. not going to pay me for extra services. Do I have any Sundays off that I still get paid for? That's good. 
No, I don't. Okay. So I don't have any sick leave. Do I have any vacation time? Mm -hmm. These are all things you have to ask because if none of these are the case, you may need to consider looking for another job. Yeah. Me personally, when I go on a job interview, I try to make sure I at least have two other possibilities. So if this one don't work out, I'm still in negotiations with two others. Because when you uh, when you try to negotiate from a desperate place, you sign up for things that you that you really not willing to do, but you desperate, you need it. Yeah. And when it's going to come time for them to capitalize on what you said you would do, and you your position it. now has changed, you are gonna have a problem. Hey yeah. man, you said you would do all the extra services and everything for free. Now it's time for the extra services, <laughs> and you talk about I need to get paid. I'm a professional. <laughs> Not what you said when we hired you. You signed a contract, big fella. And even if you didn't sign the contract, because most churches, you, yeah. every church, most churches are not there yet. Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest with you. And I'm not talking about small churches. Yeah. I'm talking about big mega churches. Most churches are not at contract level yet. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are at contract level, let's be honest. And I've been on both sides. I've been on the side where I've broken contract and I've been mm -hmm. on the side where the church has broken con contract. Very rarely is e either one, either party going to take each other to court for not yeah. filling the contract. That's I, just, I, I feel like that's, that's just, I feel like that's music in general though. Like who yeah, has that's the just, money to really be like, oh, I'm about to sue I'm you so, because yeah. you took my song. Well, I made $2 off this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. If you want the $2, all you have to do is right. like, like, so, so we really not, it's really not for suing purposes. It's really just for integral purposes. Yep, exactly. That, that, you know, because cause stuff get lost in conversation and That's translation. True. I meant this, I meant that. You didn't say that. So when we put up a contract, it's really to just help us to be able to see what the agreement is yes. to kind of hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. So the contract is not necessarily a legal binding contract where I take you to court and or put you the in jail. The minute you break it. this contract, you going yeah, to court, more, get your lawyer it's ready. More so, it's more so for integrity's sake and for accountability's sake for both yeah. parties. When you're doing a contract, you want to try to make sure that it's something that benefits you and it's something that benefits them. In other words, make it mutually beneficial for both parties and something that can hold both parties accountable. So when you're thinking of contract, just think more so of accountability and a reference sake to say, okay, when it comes time to get to these things, when it comes to recordings, when it comes to, you know, things outside of typical church services, no, we want to do a live recording of 12 songs. You're like, that's what's up. What y'all gonna do about that? Yeah. I just play it for church. I'm not about to do 12 songs and I still get the same check that I get for doing yeah. two services in the rehearsal. That's not yep. gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? But, yep. but you know, they may not have been thinking about doing a record when they first hired you. Mm -hmm. So these things, you gotta kind of get ahead of the curve. As a, as a business person, you gotta see down the line. You gotta see in the future because you may have started playing at this church when they were small and then it grew exponentially when you got there. Mm -hmm. And so now there's a lot of other factors that need to be brought into play that you never thought about. Yeah. So if you don't want to put that in your contract when you first initially get the job, when you start to see things changing, then you may have to talk to them about renegotiating some things because now when I came here, we was at one service. Now we had three services at different locations. Yeah. Y'all not providing me transportation to get to these locations. Mm -hmm. So I have to drive my own car. Yeah. I didn't factor that in when I came here because that wasn't a factor. But now that it's become a factor, we have to renegotiate the terms because mm -hmm. that's wearing tail on my personal vehicle. Yeah. So those are things, you know what I'm saying? As a professional, you have to think about those things. Okay, you know, I, I, I wear my own clothes. I sweat out my own clothes. I got to get those clothes clean. I'll use my own car. That car is wearing tail. and tear. I got to put gas in it and all that stuff. So that's a part of my pricing. I yep. use my own computer. I have a hard drive. I have interfaces. I have, you know, certain things that I need to have to do my job right. That's my personal stuff. If I leave it here, if the stuff gets damaged, will the church be responsible for it? Or will I be responsible for it? Mm. Even though it's my personal stuff, I'm leaving it here at the church's expense. 
So when they have guest musicians come in, if a guest preacher get on the stuff, I don't pack my stuff up and say, hey, I don't know what to tell you. I leave it here for everybody. <laughs> Yeah. So in the case that something happens to this stuff while it's in your possession, what do we have in place that say you guys will fix it or that I will take the charge and I will fix it? Those are things that have to be discussed because those are issues that happen. If you're a drummer and you like to have certain symbols and you leave your symbols and they get cracked, you don't know which strike cracked the symbol. Yeah. You don't know if it was when you were playing, when it was another drummer playing, but the truth is, I don't care. This, if you leave symbols at the church, they will get cracked at some point in time. Yep. If you leave sticks at the church, it's going to get broken at some certain point in time. If you put heads on the drums, they're going to go dead and you're going to have to change the drums. Mm -hmm. Change the heads on the drums. If you're doing that with your personal money, is there a reimbursement plan in, in place mm -hmm. from the church? Think, if there's not a re yeah, if it's not a reimbursement plan from the church, then that's going to be a difference in my salary. Mm. If I'm gonna be paying this stuff out of pocket, oh, we we talking about hundreds of dollar difference in pay. Yeah, yeah. Because these I mean, things are expensive. That, that and those correct. are things you have to take in the nature of the job, what you're asking me for, what you require, because you know you you want you want a certain look, you want a certain caliber. You know, just being honest, when you see somebody walking with Gucci shoes on. Mm -hmm. You automatically think, okay, this person has more money than the average person because they have on designer shoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't just have on nice shoes. They have on designer shoes, which means this is a cut above the rest. Mm -hmm. And you have what I would like to call designer musicians. Mm. They are not your typical musicians. Right, right. These guys are cut above the rest. These are who musicians look at and glean from. Mm -hmm. They look at their videos and try to learn their stuff. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Demand. They listen to the records that they played on. There's a different demand on them. Mm -hmm. So now when I come in, oh yeah, I need no less than 1500 a week. Hell of a lot. Let's say you go into a church with this business understanding of Hey, these are the questions that I'm asking. This is what I'm requesting. Like, do I get two Sundays off a year? Like, if I can't get this, then surely I need to get paid for X, Y, and Z. Like, let's say you're in that negotiation phase. How important is it to, one, be able to deliver what you're requiring um, in terms of, like, let's say you charge 1200 or 1100 a week, whatever that may be. How important is it to be able to deliver and properly communicate and be professional with what you're asking for, because I feel like at a certain point, if someone's paying you a thousand dollars or twelve hundred or fourteen hundred dollars a week, there has to be a certain level of professionalism and demand to to um justify what you're charging. Like you can't be, I don't feel like you can be charging fifteen hundred, showing up late, not knowing the music, dropping the ball on, yeah, I, I was gonna have these stems done, but something came up. I was on the road. I, I couldn't get it done or I missed my flight. I can't be here on Sunday. Like you would, I would say you're a fool if you're doing that, you know, but speak to that professionalism. How important is that? Yeah, that, that professionalism is a big part of it's in the church world. I'm just, I'm just break it down for you in the church world. Once you talking about a thousand dollars a week and up, mm. You're moving into a very small number of churches that can pay that. Yeah. I'm just being on, and I'm talking about in the country. Okay. It's for not those a of you large watching, For those of you watching that, because I've had people that uh, reached out to me and be like, I want to get to America because I hear churches pay good. Like, understand when we're talking a thousand on up, that's different. Like, that's, especially that's in Richmond market. That's not necessarily yeah. happen. Like musicians yeah, aren't getting a, a thousand and up. You know, yeah. that's not the standard. Yeah, but keep once, going. Yeah, once you once you start to talk about a thousand dollars a week and up, you moving into, I call it big boy territory. Yeah, and the 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 margin for mistakes gets smaller. Mm. It gets smaller because now the, the, the you know why churches stop paying musicians? Why? Because they can make a demand on you. Mm. Say more. I, I I pay I pay you because I can put I can't put a demand on volunteers. Ooh. 
or you'll be a fool too. But when I stop, yeah, when I started, when I start paying you, I could put a demand on it because yeah. I want what I paid for. Yeah. So churches, are, they started paying musicians so they can put a demand on musicians to get what they want out of them. You know, so so when I pay you, I don't want to hear about you and your wife got in an argument yesterday and you weren't able to sit down and learn the music. <laughs> like, well, you, you do know that we're responsible for the house that you and your wife live in. Mm-hmm. So we don't, I, and and that may sound so stupid, mm-hmm. but you know what happened? Yeah. You know the baby could get sick, and, and and certain things could happen in life that doesn't allow you the time to sit down and learn your music. Mm-hmm. There's things that happen. So when you coming into a professional level, now you got to know how your brain works in order to retain music. Mm. See, the, see, I know how to learn music because I know how my brain works. That's deep. I know how my brain works. I know how my brain retains information. So certain songs, I know if I don't sit down with it, I'm not going to retain. Yeah. Then there's certain songs when I hear it, I'm like, oh, I can listen to that on the way to rehearsal and have it down. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that comes from years of learning music. Yeah. So in order to be a professional, you have to know how your brain retains music. That's deep. So you learn how your brain retain music and then you match your work responsibilities up to the way your brain retains music. Mm-hmm. So if I know I have rehearsal on Wednesday, the way my brain retains music, I can learn it during the day on Wednesday and by the evening time, I can play without no mistakes every Mm -hmm. song if my brain doesn't retain that music that way i may get the songs on monday and have to work with it for two days in order to retain five songs that's good so you have to learn your retaining curve and it does get better over time would you say Mm, it depends it depends over over time doesn't help the work ethic in the amount of time helps Gotcha. Okay. So you just can't say I'm gonna get better. No, you're not gonna get better if you're not applying yourself. Yeah. If you're not working, if you're not getting uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Repetition breeds retention. So yeah. sometimes I may listen to a song down ten times. They're like, you just played the song. Yeah. I know the information, but I haven't retained it yet. I gotta say that because I feel like there's. I've uh, had a conversation with about this particular topic um, of music retention before. It's like you can know literally what you just said. You, I know the music, but in terms of getting it from my brain and getting the fingers to actually do it, it's like there's certain things about certain songs. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. It's like I, kn- I noticed, I noticed change is about to come up, but I need to be able to nail what I know is about to come up. So I feel like you can. You can know the music, but retaining it and being able to execute it is another thing. Like that's a whole that's different, a mus- different that's what, thing. That's what I be telling you. All those things are different muscles. Like my arm. Okay, my, my my arm. Let's say I got muscles. In this arm, there are different parts of muscles that can mm-hmm. be worked out. You got your bicep, but you also got your tricep. Yep. You got diff- they're all different muscles. So mm-hmm. it's the same thing with your brain. Your brain has different muscles. Yeah. You got a, you got your retention side, then you have your execution of what you retain. Yeah. Those are two different muscles. So because I know the information, I retain the information. Now I got to get the information from here to here. Yeah. And so sometimes I'm practicing not to learn it. I'm practicing. I'm practicing to execute it and retain it. So sometimes my wife she gets irritated. Because she'd be like, baby, you just played that part 17 times. I'm sick of hearing it. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to play it where I don't even think about it. I could yes. subconsciously play this song. Play it asked me two months down the, down the road and say, hey, play this. And I could say, all right, let's go. One, two, and play it down. Yeah. I'm that's So I'm working to get my brain there. That's a task. So I had to almost embody what I'm learning. Learn the song. Learn how many times they do each part. Mm-hmm. Learn the progressions. Learn the breaks. Learn the feel. 
learn the dynamics. All of those things are a part of learning the song. And now, I, and so now that I've learned it, now I have to go into retention mode. So I was in learning mode when I'm stopping. Oh, mm-hmm. what chord was that? Okay, what was the bass note for that? So I'm in learning mode. That's learning mode. Now I'm in retention mode yeah. to where I'm playing the song down, playing it with the song to make sure I got all the parts. Like, okay, okay, I, I, I know the song down. The then I go into execution. Yeah. Learn, retention, execution from what I retain. Yeah. So now, where can I put my nice little pieces that I want? I may want to put a little chord in there. I may got a little run that I can add a into this little break. Yeah, yeah. I may can rearm some parts and stuff like that. Now I'm just working on my execution of where I want to make, take some liberties from the original mm-hmm. arrangement that I can add in. So all those, all those things are different parts of being a musician that you have to, to, to manicure. Yeah, so, so to speak. So you're paying you know me to you're paying me to show up, um, to be professional. But the demand that the church is looking from from you is to be able to retain music, execute, show up on time, all of those good things. Like lead the band. Uh, you know, as you, pre- you listen, there are some MDs that don't play. That's true. I I, I could tell you some churches that that's the MD true. is sitting. He's sitting and telling everybody what to do. That's true. And this is what I'm saying. For each job you're asking me for, there's a check for it. MD. And in and, and the orchestra world, we would call that a conductor. You don't see the conductor up there like this. Mm. No. <laughs> I'm leading y'all. I'm not playing the instrument and leading y'all. Yeah. Th- those are two different things. Because I'm... I, any MD will tell you, that's a whole different muscle when you're trying to tell somebody what to do as you're still playing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes stuff go missing in what you're playing because you're trying to say, uh, C, D, G, drummer, go to the cymbals. And when yeah. we get to this part, I-, I want you to take the bass drum out, go to the cymbals. Mind you, you're still playing as you're talking. It's so crazy. Like I've, I've said this before, like the things that we do as musicians, some of these things become so natural, but if we really take down and break down what you're doing, the amount of music you have to learn, what you have to do on the fly, creating vibes on the fly, it's kind of like a superpower, low key. Like I've heard somebody else it say really that is before, super, but some, some I think studies say that musicians is uh, one of the uh, professions that use both sides of your brain. Yeah, you use both sides of your brain as a musician because you you think we doing three or four things at once. It don't feel like it. Because you get, we're you get doing used to it. You don't put in so much want. work. You don't put in so much work that it kind of like, oh, I can kind of, this makes sense. Like you, you moving all around. You orc hits over here, lead lines over here. Man, listen, let me tell you, let me just, t- it's, let me tell you how, how major it is that we don't even realize. I had a friend of mine, his name mm-hmm. was Zach Bronson. He was going on tour with Justin Bieber. Yep. VA native. He, he came, yeah. He yep. came to my house to work with the keyboards that I have. I have a series of keyboards mm-hmm. that most guys have on the road. Yeah. Oh, you got the Kronos. Yeah, yeah. I got I got so many keyboards. And mind you, I have a setup at church that I leave there. I got the Phantom, mm-hmm. the new Phantom. I got an XF6 up there. So I, I have a lot of keyboards. So he came over here anyway to get familiar with the stuff, maybe get some USB. He got, he got a USB. So, you know, get some sounds and stuff so he yeah, can yeah. be comfortable. He got to Verizon Center, which was their first show. Got to the Verizon Center, came in there with the USB stick and everything. And they was looking at him like, what you doing with that? I go, I was just going to program the keyboard and all this. So, no, we, we got a keyboard program, but just tell them what sounds you want. Really? It's a keyboard tech. For real? I've never heard of this before. You know how the drummers have a drum tech? Yes, I've heard of that, but somebody to program your own sounds? Yes. People go on the road to be keep to be a keyboard tech. That's all. Well, so you say I'm guessing this was a big tour. This is this is different though. Like this is a bigger tour. Yeah, this is Justin Bieber. 
You know, this ain't the, this you ain't, know. Not trying to be funny. This ain't Todd Delaney. Or the, yeah. No shade to them or nothing with, like that. Like, right, you got no, great artists, mind you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but gospel, like I said, that's a, that's a different tier. Yeah. So when you start talking on secular tours, and in the secular arena, this is mm-hmm. also a big artist. So they're like, man, you got to keep a tech. You ain't going to be in programming. So let me get my lead line and rope. Yeah. You say, hey, man, I want a pad with a bell in it. And, and I just want it in the middle part of the board. Up here, I want hits. And right here, I want strings. Wow. They're like, OK. And they do it. Is this good? Yep, that's fine. Put, on that board, I want hits. On that board, I want road. On that board, I want a piano. Mm. See, see, we do it so much in church. We would never think. That's a whole different job. But you know wow. how many guys that can play that don't know how to sound design? Yeah. I would say most uh, guys don't. Like, I'm I'm new to sound design, but it's a whole different language of just pulling up background strings, analog, full yeah, grand. Yeah, because sometimes you want to take the, 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 the layoff. You want to take a little bit of the sustain out of there. You may want to, you know, put yeah. a little reverb on your pad. You may want to attack. You know, Change yeah, how change it rise the, up, you know. The release where, where you hit it and it's not, it's just quick. Yeah. That's sound designing. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So so that's, that's a different job. Wow. So you got sound design, you got keyboard programming, then you got to play it. Yeah. That's another job. Then you reach over to your laptop. Here comes another job. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, so for the job I'm doing right now, mm-hmm. there's three to four people on the road that's getting paid to do that one job I'm doing at Greater Mount Caramel. Mm-hmm. There's four people that's getting a check. Oh, wow. One person is the design guy. One person is the guy that's playing. Then you got somebody that got a check before they went on the road that programmed the show. Mm. He then sends that programming into the person that's going to run playback, and now yeah. they got to set it up. Yep. See, these are all different jobs that we never thought of. The programmer, they not even leaving the house. Yeah. They getting a check just for putting hits and put little samples in the music. One, two, three, bam, boom, boom. Hey. And they sending all that stuff in. Uh Uh-huh. That's all they do. They program the show, make a great show. They send it into the guys. And then the guys learn the show. Mm -hmm. Then the playback engineer got to route it, mix it, do everything that he feels like needs to be done for that show to be a success. And you talking about four to five different checks that have been given out for what you do for one check every yeah. week. That's what you have to think about when you charge. Yeah. That there's five people that's eating from what you do. You're doing all of those things and you charge $500 a week. Hmm. <laughs> but you don't think about it like that. You because don't. it's so natural. You do it for the love of it. You do it out of your heart. But in, in terms of you know, when you talk about negotiating money, mm-hmm. uh, you also got to think about your, your skill, the demand that's on your skill plays in the part of the price. And then you got to think of the place that you're going to. If you know yeah. if it's 100, 150 people in there, the possibility of you getting $1,500 a week is very slight. It's like, don't shoot it yourself be, in the foot either. Like by going yeah, to it may be what you It may be what you're worth. Yeah. But, but they don't have that ability. Yeah, you got to make it make sense so, at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, so it, it has to make sense for that. And then I've had churches do this. I've had churches try to bite off more than what they could chew because they really want you. Mm. They say, hey, man, we're going to get that 1500 We're going to get it to you. Okay, we got it. And they could do it for six months. And then and after that six-month period, they they come to you like, hey, Kale, um, mm. we're going to have to cut you back. And you like, I went and bought a house off of the salary. Dang. I went and got two new cars because you told me you could pay me this money. Mm-hmm. And now y'all telling me y'all got to cut me. But that's what you got to think about as a businessman. Yeah. 
Is the price that you're charging them, are they going to be able to sustain this over the period of your contract? Yeah. Now, that may be their hopes, but you got to see if that's a reality. If it's that's 150 true. people in there, that's, that's, that's scary. I ain't saying it's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to do, you got to do your research. You got to do the math too. Because it could be 150 people in there, but it could be 100, 100 of them could be lawyers and doctors and politicians. High earners. It could be the, yeah, it could be, it could be the right set of 150 people that can they really count upon you. But they all you, have a revelation of giving. <laughs> right, right. So you just got to pay attention to the church. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the culture of the church to see if this is a sustainable amount of money for you and your family that y'all be able to live on. But those are all the things you think about as a businessman. Okay, what type of pastor is offering me this? Is he shysty? Is he a man mm. of his word? Is he integral? Is he like that pastor if in the, New York? <laughs> Gotta ask these questions. Just be honest. <laughs> because, but, because, because, because sometimes I've seen this. I've seen when the pastor has money, Mm. But the church doesn't have money. Yeah. And you think it because the pastor has money that the church is going to take care of you. Those are two separate entities. Yeah. You can't expect the church to do what the pastor agreed to. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you got to make sure, okay, pastor, are you going to be paying this or is the church going to be paying it? Because I need to know who to put this demand on. Because he may say, oh, yeah, well, the church, we're going to write you $1,000, but I'm going to give you 300 out of my check. Mm. Oh, are you? Oh, Pastor, I need to get that in writing. You don't trust me? I do. I just, I just, I, I don't want you to forget. Or maybe I, I don't want there to be no mishaps. Because when mm. there's no writing, there's no type of, any type of verbiage that say this is going to be the case. He can say, I didn't say that. Pastor, I heard you say, well, Carol is a liar. Hey. <laughs> now it's your word against his. Who you think they're gonna believe? A musician that just came in or the pastor? The pastor. So we just say, okay, Pastor, cool. I'm gonna shoot you a text stating what you just said. Just reply back, got it. Mm. So in the case that that three hundred dollars don't show, yeah, Pastor, on January the ninth at uh three thirty five, you said that you would give me three hundred dollars weekly out of your pocket. It's right here. Dang. Mm -hmm. so so as a, as a businessman as a professional when y'all come up with negotiations yeah. follow it up with a text or email yeah. follow it up with a text or email so you can have proof of what was said and what was agreed upon not just y'all talking with your mouth yeah things get lost in translation need, sometimes yeah yeah things get lost Get some people mean proof. well they mean well sometimes it just happened that sometimes they were so anxious to get you on board that they didn't even realize they said they would pay you two sundays a month and the other two you could go spend with your wife they didn't <sighs> even know they said they're just like yeah 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 Kel, Kel, when can you start when can you start <laughs> and you're like i told you i would only be here two sundays out the month yeah oh we wow don't have we didn't know. we're gonna have to re you see what I'm saying? So yeah. you, once you had that conversation and y'all lock all, con all, all, all the different contents of that contract in, follow it up with an uh, email or a text message just to make sure that mm -hmm. everything that was agreed upon Still is on the same on, page. On, got the consent from both parties to say, yes, that's what I said. Yes, that's what you said. And then once you do that and all those things are locked in, you got to make sure no matter what's going on in life, that you fulfill your contract. Yeah. That's that sounds easy. Of it. That's the other part of it, but life happens. That sounds easy. Yeah. You, but, but, but life happens, bro. You was out with an artist. You didn't know your flight was going to get delayed. You don't get back at the same time. You didn't have time to go over the music. Yeah. Now, you may have some grace. You may have some grace, because I believe you should have grace. Absolutely. But, but there is a a tenure of grace that don't last forever. Yeah. It's not, it's not immeasurable grace. And then it goes and then back guess to what? In the church ahead, world, you got even in relationships, you have to build up grace. That's what I was about to go. To. So I was about to go up to that. So, so like, man, Carol, he's always on time. He always knows his music. Yeah. He's always professional. If we are calling him, he's not picking up his phone. He's not here. Something is wrong. Yeah. 
This is not his character. He has shown us his character for six months. Yeah. So he's built a reputation with us of having good character. Let's make sure you're all right. Yeah, what we're seeing now is not indicative of what he showed us. Something is wrong. Yeah. Let's investigate this. He's either on the side of the road stranded, his phone went dead. Something is wrong. Surely. (laughs) <laughs> that's how you want it. Yeah. That's that's how you want your reputation to the fact that when you don't come through, they know oh, something is wrong. Yeah. Something something is going on. It's it's personal. Him and his wife is going through something. He somebody got to be sick. Something has to be the problem because we have never had to worry about anything that he said he was going to do. He's always done it. Mm. He's built up a rapport with us. Yes. That's what you want to do as a professional. Don't get in there three months talking about I need a raise. Hell, Lord. I I just had it happen to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I ain't telling you stuff. I'm just pulling out my hat. Musicians yeah. do that. Hey, man, I know it was going to be this. I'm going to need a raise. So because you didn't know you're going to charge us, you should have did your due diligence as a businessman and a contractor to say, to do to to do your homework about the job that you apply for. Yeah. That's what you apply for. Do some research on the church. Mm-hmm. Hit other musicians. Hey, hey, Phil, I, I I I saw that you was the MD at such and such and such. Tell me a little bit about the church. Mm. What happened with you? Why did you leave? Those did you are get important fired? questions. <laughs> the important questions. Because why are you doing that? Because I have to interview them because I need to know what I'm getting myself yep. into. Yep. I have to do my due diligence. Every every situation I go in, I always contact the person that was before me and say, hey, man, what's up What's, what's up with these guys? Oh, man, don't fool with them. They liars. No, Got not you. liars. <laughs> in the church? Surely what? not the church. No. Yeah, they're, they're liars, no, man. No. Or, or they'll tell you, oh, the pastor really goes out and y'all be in three evening services a month. Oh, we really do anything extra here? <laughs> Maybe once a year. <laughs> and so you're not thinking to charge them for no extra services because they don't really do anything. That's what they told me. Uh, they Next wouldn't you know, lie. <laughs> spring revival. We're having guest speakers come in every Wednesday. But y'all don't really do nothing. This is something new. Oh, we, we don't do nothing in the summer months. <laughs> but we always have spring revival. <laughs> you ne- That's what I'm saying. So you got to do your homework to see what type of culture <laughs> you're going into to yeah. know, uh, do they really not do anything? Yeah. Or they, they may not just do as much. Because let me tell you something. When people don't know what your professional job entails, they're not going to take the same things into account when they give you certain tasks. Yes. Now, you know, we got a three piece band. You sending me song with horn arrangements in there, the guitars, the lead. It's, ma'am, we got drums, bass, and keyboard. I don't have guitar. I don't have this. I don't have that. Mm-hmm. It's not going to sound like that. So, what do we do? Oh, well, they got stems online. Yes, they do have stems online, but those stems cost money. Are y'all gonna give me a budget to to, to purchase stems every week? Mm-hmm. Do y'all do y'all, are y'all gonna have a credit card or anything that y'all can put on file that I can just go in and get these songs and y'all gonna be charged? Oh no, we want to do that. Can you be- get the stems and we'll pay you back? Oh lord, sure I can, sure I can. Uh, let me get that in writing. And how long will it take y'all to pay me back? You business. Because we said we was gonna pay you back, yeah, man. But I bought that in, in December. It's now February. Yeah. How long? This track was only forty dollars. <laughs> Y'all damn <Damn-o>. bad. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, it matters. Yeah. What's the time frame? Are y'all gonna pay me back? Am, yeah. am I gonna get the church on Sunday, and you gonna have a reimbursement check ready for me, uh-huh. as well as my normal check? Uh-huh. These are all the things that have to be discussed because we're professionals. Yeah. So you have to think about the things that a normal person that don't do what you do 
for a living would not think about. And that's and this conversation is only for those that are, I think, trying to be at that level of cut different. Because I think there are some musicians out there that will say, "Hey, I ain't worried about all that stuff. I'm just showing up. You know, I want to play. I want to have fun. I'm up. I want to grow with the church. I want to be a part of the ministry." I ain't, I ain't think about all the extra stuff, but I think it's different when it's like you're on your level and you're like, hey, this is my career. This is my livelihood. I take this serious. Like, it's my livelihood. I do it full time. And because I do it full time, there's a certain, there's a price I'm going to offer. That, there's right. a price I'm charging. But what I'm offering yes, you is that part. goes with the price point that I'm, I'm, I'm hitting you with too. And you literally just told me I was amazed and shocked that you say you make stems every week. I'm like, what? Every single week, whatever, whatever sequence they want to do it in, whatever key they want to do it in. Sometimes they want to do mashups of different songs and they want them all to be pulled in at one. So That's I have to change job. the tempo of certain songs. That's easily I can't eight do hours that and a I'm day. Yeah, I can't do that if I'm punching a clock during the day. You can't. But that's the demand. So you have to pay that's the demand. So, 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 because that demand is demand is there. So now I could charge because of that. Now, you know, if I'm at a, a different church that may not require all that, I can get a job during the day and still do what this church require me requires of me, and it's not a it's not a hassle. Mm -hmm. But a church that's a hassle where I can't do anything outside of this church, you're gonna have to pay me. Yeah, you're gonna have to pay me. And let me tell you this. It, bro, it's, it's just so many things you have to consider as a musician. Now, me, myself, I'm a hybrid musician. In other words, I vacillate between church and the road. I do both. Mm -hmm. I'm not fully on the road, and yet I'm not always in church. Mm -hmm. So I have a, 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 a pretty good mix of when I do road things and when I'm in church things. Now, you may say, I ain't doing no road stuff. I'm just solely commit to church. Which sounds good. Yeah. But for me, it adds more value to my name. You understand what I'm saying? So when you saying. when the church goes out and says, Hey man, I, I'm thinking about hiring Phil Walker, what does that mean in this field? Mm -hmm. Oh man, he, he's an excellent musician. He's out with JJ Harrison, he's out with Josh Copeland, he's out with Ernest Pugh, he's out with Charles Butler. Those are real names that I'm out with. Those give my name value. Yeah. That helped me be able to charge a price. And then when you deliver, because it's like, I'm, oh, okay, this makes sense. This is why he's in demand. But 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 this but this is the, the crazy part about it. When you get to a church that gives you a certain amount of money, they don't want to split their time with you and them artists. Yeah. Because hey bro, we paying you top dollar. I don't want to hear I'm, I'm in Baton Rouge this week. But yet you can't keep telling these people no. You have to find the balance. And that's why I'm sure relationship. Because, yes. If you, can, if you can. If you can. If you can. Build relationship. Yeah, relationship, professionalism, balance, all those things matter. Because they can say, hey, man, Kale, Kale's here every week. He does everything that he's supposed to do. And this week he said he's going to be out with CC Winers, we're fine with that. Mm. Sending somebody that's capable and all that stuff, we know when you get back, we're going to be well taken care of. Yeah, yeah. We have no problem with you. Go and enjoy yourself. We'll see you when you get back. Relationship. It's a give that's, and take. That's, hey, can you pull up on rehearsal on Monday? We, we, we working on Sure, no problem. You know, it's that relationship. Give and take. It, it helps you and it helps them. When you do your job, you ain't got no problems with them. They do what they're supposed to do. They, you don't have no problems with them. It has to be a two-way street. Yeah. You can't talk to them about being on time. Well, I I be on time, but when I get there, nobody's nobody else is on time. Okay, I've heard, I'm I'm saying this because I've heard many musicians say this. Uh, yeah, I say be there at seven o'clock. Uh oh. And when I get there, I be sitting out there in the car for thirty minutes. Oh, not thirty. Hey, thirty minutes late. Jesus. So now, when y'all say seven o'clock, I get there at eight. This is what you got to realize as a professional. That you the one getting paid. True. That's good. They they can't place a demand on the 40 choir members that's supposed to be there. That's They're volunteers. Good. That's good. They're writing you a check. That's You'll good. be there if nobody else be there and wait. That's good. Because you're an employee. 
They are volunteers. They cannot place a demand on volunteers. They can try to, they can admonish to, but you want to tell Sister Lula May that Lula May. leave your job leave your job early. I know it's helping you take care of your family and it's helping you pay your bills and we ain't paying you nothing. Yeah. But we still want you to be on time. <laughs> make it make sense. You're not, you're not going to have a choir. Make it make sense, Steven. <laughs> so what yeah. I would tell a musician, mind your business. That's good. That's good. Mind your business. Your business is to be there at seven o'clock. Mind your business. Yeah. Do what you said you would do. And when they get there at 8 30 and they had a rehearsal for seven o'clock and you packing up and you getting ready to leave. Oh, 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 we wasn't finished. Oh, oh, I'm done. Yeah, I'm finished. I was here at seven o'clock. Uh, see y'all when I, I we're gonna have to talk to past about this because that is ridiculous. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, see, I told you I would I would rehearse from <laughs> from seven to eight thirty. I got a I got a late night rehearsal because I'm going on the road tomorrow. Yeah, y- y'all got here at eight fifteen. Yeah, that's fine. Y'all got fifteen minutes to run five songs. <laughs> I love it. See, they can't be mad at you because you did what you were supposed to do. That's something they say. If, if you can't say ouch, just say amen. You know. See, but if they getting there at eight fifteen and you getting there at eight twenty five, yeah. And then want to talk about how they late and you got there after them. Come on. <laughs> Mind your business. When you make an agreement, you stick to your agreement if nobody else do it. Well, none of the band show up. Don't worry about none of the band because you don't get a group check. Yeah. You get a personal check to your name. Uh-huh. So what the drummer does shouldn't affect your job. What the keyboard player does shouldn't affect your job. Do your job. Mind your business. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. Get there at seven. Be ready. Be well rehearsed. When you get there, waiting on that by church. Sometimes church gate ain't open. We- sometimes nobody else there. Don't worry about that. Do your job. This because you know why you do your job. Listen, let's say okay, I'm doing my job, and it's not enough money now, and I want to raise. When I go to sit down and talk to you about a raise and I don't do the job that you already paying me for, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I don't do the job that you already paying me for. And then yet you want to talk about getting a raise and want more money and you ain't paying for the job we pay you for. That's good. So that's why you got to fully do that job. So when you go to a rate, when you want to have a conversation about a raise, it's no problem. We're lucky to have you. But yeah. you want to have to do the job that we pay you for, and you want to ask for more money. You got to look at it both from both sides. You got to look at it as an employer, and you got to look at it as an employee. Yeah. When you have been an employer, you should be a better employee because you know the stresses of being an employer. Yeah. You know how hard it is to make certain budgets and certain deadlines and stuff to make sure people are getting paid. So when somebody's going through the trouble of making sure you get paid, you go to go through the trouble of making sure you do what they pay you for. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's hey. That's good. Phil Walker, everyone. Phil Walker, man. This was a very insightful, helpful conversation. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you for coming on. Um appreciate all of your wisdom. Let the people know where they can find you at and where they can follow you at. You can find me on Instagram at the real Phil Walker. At the real Phil Walker on Instagram or uh, Facebook, I'm just regular Phil Walker. Um, email Phil Walker at gmail.com. Like, if anything you need me for, oh, okay, I'm still here. Keep going. Okay, yeah, anything that you need me for musically or anything, you can find me on those uh, on those websites on Instagram, the real Phil Walker, and that Facebook app, Phil Walker. Got you. Well, again, brother, thank you for coming on. We're definitely going to chat more. I feel like, again, this was an insightful conversation. Thank you for coming on the Creative War Podcast. We are out. Yes, sir.